so whatever is growing in that environment is going to respond to also the toxins of the environment, right? So that healing Absolutely. element has to be in direct connection right. with the environment. And although we have things that have now been naturalized, right? I mean, where does that stand in, in terms of herbalism? I mean, you have the native plants, but then you have, you know, lavender, right? I mean, that's, right. that's right. Exactly. European, but I mean, it's incredibly right. healing. Well, I'm European, right. and hopefully I'm You're incredibly healing, so I'm naturalized. Right, but so, I guess what I'm saying yeah, is so in, exactly. in, within this movement of making sure that the native plants great are safe, question. how do you, I mean, you know, nobody wants to get rid of the apple tree, you know, and I'm not saying anybody wants to right, get rid exactly. of anything, but I'm saying, where do you, where sure. is that synthesis? Sure, that's such a great question, Kaya. So one thing, let me go back to the natives and um, Robin Wall Kimmer in her Braiding Sweetgrass, a, a, a profound book I highly recommend, even if you're not a plant geek or take herbal medicine, but if you take ginger and salt and pepper, mm-hmm. you know, our herbal medicines are on the spice rack. Right. But what she's done, she's a Potawatomi elder as well as an ethnobotanist, and she's really brought this language of these plants as kin. Mm-hmm. And so these plants, it's not just a creation myth or a creation story. These literally are our ancestors. Right. And so for 700 million years, pine trees and these plants, and we aren't even a half a million. Right. So, there's so there's much this more to learn. Whole exponential Carl Sagan kind of evolutionary story to be told. But with these natives, for example, ginseng. I mean, ginseng in the Aurelia family has survived the Ice Age. And so, you know, in 2020, we went through political pandemic. We went through incredible amount of stress. But imagine being a rooted creature, and here comes a glacier, and you can't move. And so that ginseng creates chemistry for itself that helps it survive, and then that medicine that it made for itself is actually why ginseng is so profound for us. You know, it's called an adaptogen. It helps us adapt to stress. But man, that plant adapted to incredible (laughs) stress, right? So they're not here for us. Right. But the important thing, as you were saying, you know, with the wine and what do we do, they hold the matrix of the story. So they hold intact you know, that invisible web that is the story, that is the history, that is something that is so vital and so prominent and, you know, it's unconscious. But that's why we walk through these mountains and we just have this sense. And those plants are the guardians. They're the storytellers. They hold that. So, yes, we want the medicines and we want the black collage. But it's more than that. But yeah. it is so much more. Yeah. There's the pollinators. There are the ephemerals. And so we can plant them. And like we just saw in my garden here, downtown Charlottesville, <laughs> black cohosh is all over. Golden seals taking over. You don't need that shady slope. You know, don't right. wait till you have the perfect conditions. You know, plant, plant the plants. Them. Just yeah. plant them. So that's part of why we want to hold the natives, because we really want to keep that heritage and that story. And then with the other herbs, we so welcome them. I mean, the majority of my apothecary are the Europeans. Right. You know, dandelion. In my book research, I did find out that there is native dandelion, native Canadian dandelion. But, but it's not the, what you typically see. No, out in, okay. no, that's European. Yeah. And St. John's Wort's European. Yarrow, like all of our major medicines yeah. are European. So, of course, there's a place for that. And then we look at kudzu, the plant that's taking over the south. I don't know if you know yeah. the invasive kudzu mm-hmm. or if your yeah. listeners okay. know kudzu. But <laughs> I hear about it all the time from my mom. Oh, from I'm your fighting mom. this. <laughs> it's like she's, she's ba- that and what is it, the bittersweet. I'm out here battling right. this bit. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a battle. But what's so fascinating, and again, I'm not, and it's all good. Let's let these invasives, there, there must be a reason. But there is. 
Right. So kudzu turns out it's steroidal. And of course, look at it. It grows <laughs> like it's on hyper steroids. Um, it's steroidal and it's an analog. And an analog means it's a replacement. It's an analog for black cohosh. Now, okay. one of the reasons, you know, in 2015, I can't even tell you the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of tons. We are not talking pounds. We're talking tons. And I have a digger friend of mine down in Floyd. Ten fresh black cohoshes make a pound. A pound is 2,000 to a ton. We are talking massive amounts of plants being harvested primarily for menopause. Okay. Hot flashes, estrogen. That was never a traditional use. Like natives have incredible use of black cohosh. It was rheumatism. It was steroids. Right. So, yeah, it really helps with hot flashes. And then here comes kudzu, <laughs> you know, the plant that's eating the south that is equally wonderful for hot flashes. So this is now our work of, I mean, that's part of the reason for the book. So let me ask you, let me back up one second. Though. So sure. an analog replacement replacement medicine wise but then also physically like when you move the black cohosh out is the kudzu then taking over no you keep kudzu you keep the black cohosh where it is no but i mean like if you're talking about all this tonnage you know all this being harvested right so i mean if it's not being replaced which is one of the reasons why organizations like united plant savers are so vital and important to protect the plants make sure we're being um sustainable about it but I guess what I'm asking is, so if you come into an area and you harvest a ton, literally, of black mm-hmm. cohosh, then is the kudzu then taking over that spot? You know, kudzu is funny. Kudzu looks horrific, and it is pretty <laughs> horrific. But the good thing, one, the good thing about kudzu is it's been used in Asian cooking for millennia. It's a cornstarch. It's a yeah. thickener. It's a medicine. The Chinese have kudzu in their 50 fundamental herbs. Isn't that funny how for some people, like this annoying, this obnoxious entity, but this it weed, is. quote unquote. Like it, right. it, it is a Because it's not in its, its <laughs> weed. It's, it came over from China, you know, lots right. of things. Well, if it's not in its natural habitat, right, there's nothing to check it. Right. And because we don't know its value, well, one, it's a bear. Like, <laughs> I know I'm on radio and I'll have to be careful, but... It's so intense to harvest. It is really hard work to harvest kudzu. But there's a market for it. And there's this great young company. They're permaculturists outside of Asheville. And they're all about kudzu. And they're doing great. And during COVID, kudzu was a main medicine. Because what was the lung inflammation? It was boggy. And so steroids or anti-inflammatories. So they ran out of kudzu. Like they ran wow. out of the stores, and so we're just learning. We're Isn't going that fascinating? Forward. Then that for it's whatever reason, I mean, I'd like blowing. to think, as you would say, like the yes. dreamers are dreaming, and then the dream is dreaming us. But how crazy is it that we're being overrun with it, and then all of a sudden, there's this <laughs> pandemic, <laughs> and you have a use for it, and you're yeah. running out of it. So was nature supplying oversupplying something because it? was in preparation for something. I mean, you know, there's all these senses going on around us we're not tapped into in our daily lives. And I know that that's really part of, you know, main journey of a healer, of an herbalist, some, you know, a soul as yourself to try and, you know, put the mundane on the back burner at some point in in life and and listen to the larger, you know, sphere around you. Exactly. And, you know, in the... What was it, the 90s? James Lovelock and Lynn mm-hmm. Margulis came out with a Gaia hypothesis. And it was the first time, of course, indigenous people have been saying this for millennia. Right. And I say indigenous, Celtic indigenous, right. Mongolian indigenous. The old ways, the traditions, yeah. You the know, ancient wisdom. forever known that it's alive. But the beautiful thing about the Gaia hypothesis is they we're saying how there's this interspecies communication Mm -hmm. and that the planet, it's all in self-correction. So for all we know, the heating of the planet could be this self-correcting mechanism, 
but we don't have the value of 100-year, 1,000-year vision. Right. So as herbalists, I mean, Phyllis Light's this profound, um, she wrote a great book, Southern Folk Medicine, and she's been a dear, dear friend and teacher, and what her four generations of Creek grannies and elders have taught her is every season watch the plants that are in proliferation. Some years there's a ton of mullein, some years there's a ton of sumac. And she was always taught, harvest what you see coming on okay. because you'll be needing that. That wasn't new age. That's an old age, watch the earth. Right. And so there's a lot of conversations we're having at, at once here. But for the kudzu, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But it right. is a food. And we are really facing dire consequences with climate change and food. And so yeah. it's steroidal, and there's nutrition there. Um, and if we take, if we slow down on the black cohosh consumption, and menopausal women are some of the largest consumers of natural medicine, we have income, we're intelligent, we don't want to take drugs, and so we're turning to herbs, and we don't know any better, so we buy cohosh, but if we start putting kudzu there, okay. that then eradicates a lot of the excesses of where it's growing. And the thing with kudzu is what you see is pretty much what's there. It doesn't crawl into the forest. Okay. And so there's a protective wall of what's growing in in the forest. And I cannot make any statements. I mean, all I can do is observe. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm too old to <laughs> pretend like I can make statements about <laughs> nature. But I just see these walls. That's very humble of you. Very oh, humble. God, you get humbler <laughs> as you get older. It's so great. You're you like, can ask anybody how old they are, and you can do well, whatever. It's like, you know, Bob Dylan, I was so much older than, I'm younger than that now. <laughs> 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 You're like, go away. And I really, you know, but that's, I've, yeah, to, to me, exactly. right, that's yeah. a true sign of somebody who is willing to learn because you're like, wait a second, my cup is not full. You know, it's, it's, it's not, I mean, not that you're not overflowing with beautiful abundance. Here we are on your, you know, your sacred home. And I'm so grateful to be here. But I guess what I'm getting at is that the fool is probably the most valuable character and you know, and the tarot the and beyond is because and the end. right, but it's like you have room to grow. Mm. You, you, if you walk around, you know, saying, "Oh, I know everything," <laughs> which we've all Gets experienced boring. that in ourselves <laughs> and in other people. I've what, been there. What do you get to learn then? I mean, what fun been is that? There, done that, <laughs> even been recorded. <laughs>